Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So I have another gemmed pack episode for you all. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So starting with the PlayStation 5, as you can see, we have now version 8.20 that is out. So a couple of things that was included in this release was there is music in the control center is now much easier to use. It says you can also avoid unintentionally broadcasting your surroundings while broadcasting games using your PlayStation VR 2. Next, it says if you say what's new via a voice command on any screen, you can now check for new PS5 features. It says currently this is only available in English for players with accounts for PlayStation Network in the US and UK. And then they've improved the messages and usability on some screens. So do keep in mind for the most part here, there isn't a lot that is in this release. This is a point release, meaning it is a point to zero release. So it's not like a major version like 8 was a major version and 7 was a major version. Now, there was not any PlayStation 4 updates. We're still on version 11 for that system. And as always, do not update if you plan to use homebrew software in the future. Next up, we got a release over here from Hopper's PS4. And what they did was they released the source code to this application, which was called waste your time. Now, if you aren't familiar with that, basically waste your time was a program that takes on the impossible task of brute forcing PS4 and PS5 package passcodes. So now you can actually come in and look at the application that was built and really it's open sourced so other people can improve on it. Now I did take a quick look at the code here. This is a Visual Studio solution. And so this is also a C++ program. So now with having the ability to look at the source, maybe others that are in the scene that has a bit more experience can submit a pull request to hopefully make it a little bit easier to brute force some of those package passcodes. Then in other news, we also had an update from the flow. Seems that Sony fixed the BD-JB path traversal sandbox escape on PS5 firmware 8.00. But he does say that the proof of concept basically inside of his GitHub, this is on line 13, He's telling you what you can change that value to in order to enjoy native code execution on the PS5 firmware 7.61. Now, do keep in mind, this is a user land exploit. This is not a kernel exploit. What does that mean? That means that right now we have the ability to run fake packages on our PlayStation 5, on 4.03 and 4.50, which I'll talk about in just a second, you won't be able to do that with this exploit. This is only going to give you a user land based exploit. So don't think that you're going to get fake packages because of this. And since we're talking about PlayStation 5 4.50, I did want to update you that now you can download the payload or the bin file that Slayer Scorvy worked on that does have the 4.50 firmware offsets. Now, this is absolutely great news because right now we can run our PS4 fake packages on a PlayStation 5 4.03 and 4.50. I do believe that we will get some other firmware. So 4.51 would obviously be the last one that would be, we would be able to get here. But then there's even those earlier firmwares like firmware 3 that we don't have support for now. But if we found the 4.50 offsets, then more than likely we'll find the other offsets too. So just be patient. And then I wanted to provide a bit of an update as far as the host go. So this is another host that is based off of Spectre Dev's site. But once you actually run the jailbreak, then it will provide you a list of other payloads. 
Now, this makes it so much easier because you don't have to use a program like Netcat GUI to send the payloads over. Okay, so let's give this new host a quick try here. So right off the bat, it does state that I'm on firmware 4.03. I'm going to go ahead and jailbreak it. Okay, and there it goes, and we are in. So let's look at the payloads that we've got. So here is the K stuff. So this gives us firmware 4.03 and 4.50 only. So this will allow us to run all of our fake packages. There is another one right here. So this is the persistent elf loader. So this uses port 9021. It's by John Tornblom. There is the FTP server that is persistent version 1.4. There is a Git OS version. It says it's very slow. This one's by Logic 68. And then when we come over here, we can see there's Lib Hijacker. So this is the patches that Illusion has been working on. And then we have another FTP. This time, this is the one that is non-persistent. This one is pretty much irrelevant right now. This next one shows different version numbers. So kernel build, operating systems, and SDK versions. And here is one that will just remove the app cache from the browser. So I absolutely love having all of these payloads right here available to me. Let's go ahead and let's try one. So we'll try the case stuff. Okay, so excellent. So at this point, I now have the ability to run all of my fake packages. I can come over here and chain that with lib hijacker. So right there, you can see there is the server that is running. And now all of our patches are currently available. And I'm just going to go ahead and run Quake 2 because this is one of the fake packages that I've been playing with here on the channel. And so there you go. This one is loading and running just fine. And in more PlayStation 5 news, there was this image that was leaked a couple of days ago. And basically what this was, was stating that the disk drive for the PlayStation 5 Slim will need an internet connection. So it does say right here, internet connection required to pair disk drive and PS5 console upon setup. Account for PlayStation Network and internet connection required to redeem a voucher. And again, it also states right here that the vertical stand is sold separately. So there's a couple of things definitely that's going to aggravate customers here. Number one, needing an internet connection to pair the disk drive and the PlayStation 5. That is not something that anybody likes to have to have some sort of connection. I mean, imagine, you know, 15 years in the future, how could you pair this disk drive with a PlayStation 5 if they haven't allowed offline account pairing or offline account activation? And then the other thing is, is this vertical stand sold separately? This is something that obviously if you got the original PlayStation, you could use it horizontally or vertically. Now they're saying if you want to use vertical, then you have to buy another separate stand. So instead of buying the console and getting everything in the package, it looks like they're starting to break out all of the hardware into a bunch of different pieces, very similar to a model that Apple has used. I don't know if most of you are familiar, but if you buy a latest and greatest iPhone, you don't even get a charger with it anymore. So that is another separate purchase. So it's kind of following that model that appears to be working for Apple and some other companies. Now, there is a really good discussion for this that I saw on Wololo that came out just today. I would encourage you to go and check out this article. It will be linked below, but it's kind of their take on why that this is an issue. Next up, another update over here from Lightning Mods. Now, this one is a couple of days old, so I am sure by now there's been a bit more progress, but it just hasn't been released in another new tweet. But basically, he was like, hey, it took a few busy nights, but hopefully a release is sooner rather than later. And what this is showing is obviously the homebrew store. Now, for the applications that you can download here, these are obviously going to be applications that are only compatible with the PlayStation 5. But they will be listed and you should be able to go ahead and download those. One thing that we definitely all have wanted has been a homebrew store on the PlayStation 5 and it looks like it's shaping up just nicely. And then a couple of days ago, 
we saw this tweet from Al Ziff, and it said, DNS servers are going to be off the next few days for some upgrades. I went ahead and posted a very short, you know, two and a half minute video on how you could go ahead and set up his DNS server on your own, or you could just use an alternative DNS server. Now, the DNS server that I did mention in this video is by somebody that I do trust. This isn't some random DNS server that I'm sending you all to. I obviously take my community and every one of you very seriously. And then there was an update over here from Illusion, and he said that he added a button toggle to universally patch the flip rate function to unlock frame rate in games that don't have a patch for it. So this is a pretty substantial thing, meaning that you could hopefully unlock frame rates in games that right now isn't on that approved list. And the approved list that he has is just listed right here, which again, you'll get a link to this in the show notes, but it is supported titles. So with this, he says that here is the button combo. So on the home screen, you can press square and triangle to toggle patch apply state. And then you can also press square and circle to toggle flip rate apply state. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the reason that you can turn this off or this functionality back off is, is that some games have a problem in certain areas of the game that it doesn't work properly. So having that ability to turn on and off, at least the patch state, as well as being able to toggle the flip rate apply state. Now, again, all of this is included inside of the GitHub in his very latest release, which was 1.124. And then I did want to mention this save transfer wizard. So this is a tool that you can use for the PlayStation 5 to just copy some of your save files from your PS5 back over to your computer. Now, there's obviously some limitations with this tool. One of the ones that they put in here was, was that it can't re-sign save files. Also, this application only works with Windows. But one thing that I can say about this is, is that this is only doing what we could already do through FTP. But if you use this little tool here, it just makes it a little bit easier to get those files moved off your PS5 back over to your PC. Again, you can't really do anything with them right now, but it's good for archival purposes. And then the last one, I've been following this PSVR2 news for quite some time. And what the latest update is, is, is that on the PC and they're using Steam VR, if you already have a PSVR2 headset, what they're working to do is to make that PSVR2 headset obviously work on PC and with a number of other games. And Steam VR is where they're obviously headed, which is a very good thing to do, in my opinion. So they currently state that it currently works on AMD, only on Windows, needs a hardware dongle as a virtual port. And then it says the inside out tracking is working and then controller tracking is still a long ways off. Eye tracking is even further off. I thought it would kind of be neat to share this update because there's a lot of efforts on getting that PSVR2 working on PC, which would be absolutely perfect if that happened for me. Because then if I got one of those devices and I didn't just want to play it on my PlayStation 5, I could take it to my PC and have a fully featured headset. So that's going to do it all for today. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.